Family, seek justice on the next Montel. Good evening, I'm Bob Schieffer. The life and death of our colleague Peter Jennings. We'll talk about that tonight. Then we'll have the story. It's another day of anxious waiting as the space shuttle has to postpone landing. I'm Lee Cowan in Houston. Unlikely heart patients, I'm Mika Brzezinski with the story of a star athlete who dropped dead at practice. Think you've seen reality TV? Wait till you see it in Iraq. I'm Sharon Alfonsi in Baghdad with that story. I'm Mark Strassman. If you're a golfer with big dreams, I've got the golf lesson of the future. This is the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer. Well, by now you know the basic story. Peter Jennings died last night. It was the lung cancer that was discovered too late to treat. Peter was 67 and had been the anchor of ABC's evening news program since 1983. His family said tonight he died in peace after living a good life. We'll look back at his life tonight, and we begin with Jim Axelrod. This evening, a brief note about change. It was quick, you have noticed from his shocker level. about why he was not in Rome for the Pope in April. I have learned in the last couple of days that I have lung cancer. Yes, to I Peter Jennings' death, 20 years ago. 124 days. We never thought that it was going to be this fast, but I think the last few days we knew that the, that the time was coming. That an explanation was required at all for his absence from a major world event provides a sense of his stature. He became a, a part of a, the life of a lot of our fellow citizens, and he'll be missed. With Peter Jennings. In his final months, he remained the driving force behind ABC News, even when he couldn't make it to the office anymore. He was on the phone pretty much every day, encouraging us when he thought we were doing well, sometimes criticizing us, which Peter was not reluctant to do when he thought we were falling short of the mark. It's fair to say that the next generation of anchors will not loom as large or be as dominant figures. Howard Kurtz covers network news for the Washington Post. He says Jennings' death marks the end of a 20-plus year era when the nation got its news on a first-name basis from Peter, Dan, Tom. Tonight, somehow, that seems as quaint as rabbit ears. They really became a collective presence in our living rooms uh, in a way that will probably will be difficult to repeat in a 500 channel universe. Four months ago, Peter Jennings made a promise to his viewers. I will continue to the broadcast on good days. My voice will not always be like this. Sadly, it was one he couldn't keep. This was the very last time he would appear on air. Have a good evening. I'm Peter Jennings. Thanks and good night. Peter Jennings leaves a wife and two adult children. He smoked for much of his life, stopping for 20 years before resuming on 9-11. Barbara Walter said today, quote, I think if Peter had any message at all, it would be, for heaven's sake, don't smoke. Bob? Thank you very much, uh, Jim. Peter was our uh, fierce competitor for more than 30 years, but he was also a friend. I admired him because he was that rare person who had started at the top realized he had no business there, set about to fix that, and for sure, did just that. Peter Jennings with the news. From the beginning, Peter Jennings delivered the news with style, and the beginning came early. He became an anchor at ABC at age 26, a high school dropout, competing with the likes of Cronkite and Huntley and Brinkley. Since early this morning, enormous crowds have been queuing up outside Westminster Hall, he never lacked for confidence, but even he knew he needed more seasoning, and he soon got it overseas. In 1968, he established the first American TV news bureau in the Arab world. This is Peter Jennings, ABC News, Ramallah, in the occupied West Bank. Let's go to Peter now. He brought that experience and what he was coming to know about the Middle East to bear during the 1972 Munich Olympics, when Arab terrorists took Israeli athletes hostage. Might be most likely to narrow in on a group called Black September. He saw the Berlin Wall go up in the 60s, and he was there in the 90s when it came down. Someone actually reached up and handed me a small piece of the wall that they had chipped away. After co-anchoring World News Tonight with Frank Reynolds and Max Robinson, Jennings was named sole anchor and senior editor in 1983. His deep involvement in the newsroom was legendary. What got on the air went through him first, editing reporters' scripts right down to the wire. 
and his energy and stamina spoke for itself. During the week of 9-11, he was on air more than 60 hours, occasionally showing his softer side. And, uh, so if you're a parent, you got a kid in some other part of the country, call him up. Peter Jennings was an anchor and a good one, but most of all, he was a reporter who had great respect for the truth, a reporter who thought his viewers deserved no less. I lived in the Middle East for a long time, and I, the one thing I learned after living there was that there is no one absolutely essential truth for all people. And that every time I look at a coin, I instinctively want to look at the other side. And that really was one of Peter's great strengths. Like any well-informed person, he did have strong views, but he also understood that most things have two sides, and his reporting reflected that. Peter first made his mark as a foreign correspondent in Lebanon, and by coincidence, Dan Rather is there tonight working on a story. Dan, Peter was one fine competitor, wasn't he? He was. Bobby was a great pro. He was a loving husband and father, and a fiercely, when necessary, loyal friend. Uh, but no one can talk about Peter, in my judgment, without talking about his courage. This guy had guts. You know, I think the thing that I liked him most for was his great respect for the news. He loved the news. He thought it was important to get the story uh, and get it right. No question about it, Bob. That, you know, Peter Jennings was a, a hands-on, hard-working reporter. He was a natural as a broadcaster. He was a real thing. He could report, he could write, he could edit. As you pointed out, he had a deep and abiding passion for the news. He believed it was important. Absolutely. And he also looked like uh, James Bond. I think if there was ever a template for a foreign correspondent, <laughs> Peter Jennings standing there in that uh, trench coat. I mean, he was just made for a trench coat, wasn't he? Well, he was a trench coat and a flak jacket. Uh, let's face it, uh, Peter was, was one of the all-time greats. That, you know, he had the talent, the caring, and the success that made him uh, one of the great journalists, print or electronic, of all time. Thank you very much. Thank you. An African-American media pioneer has also died. John H. Johnson turned a $500 loan into a publishing and cosmetics empire that brought him into the inner circles of power, black and white. His Ebony and Jet magazines helped in racial stereotypes and showed corporate America the huge market potential of black consumers. John H. Johnson was 87. The seven Discovery astronauts were scheduled to return from space this morning, but NASA looked at the weather forecast and decided to put off the return until tomorrow. And if tomorrow's Florida weather is questionable, they may try to land the shuttle in New Mexico or California. Lee Cowan is at the Johnson Space Center in Houston tonight. After Discovery's pre-dawn landing was delayed by weather, not once, but twice. We're going to officially wave you off for 24 hours. There was an air of disappointment at Houston's two, mission control three, that this wasn't the picture the world was watching instead. We regret not getting you guys home today, but uh, we feel pretty confident about tomorrow. But from the sounds of the crew, there was no apology needed. You guys made the right decision, and we're with you. We're going to enjoy another day on orbit, and we'll see you on Earth tomorrow. Getting an extra day in space really isn't all that bad. Just ask Robert Kirby. Usually it's, it's mostly sightseeing. You know, you're taking pictures and just enjoying the free time. He's been on two shuttle missions, and neither one of them has gotten him home on time. His only real complaint, though, is getting in and out of that reentry suit isn't all that easy. I think if they tell you before you get dressed and ready to come back and strapped in, you're like, okay, that's great. You know, let's, let's break out the food. Let's, <laughs> let's talk a little bit. Let's take some more pictures. And with a view like that, who could blame him? But a one-day extension is really enough for everybody. Much beyond that, uh, food and water are going to start becoming an issue. So as you said, Bob, NASA has now activated three different landing sites tomorrow in the hopes that weather will be good enough in at least one of them so that one of the most anticipated shuttle landings in history can finally get underway. And I guess I have to ask this question, Lee. Uh, does this postponement, does anybody there suggest it has anything to do with anything other than the weather? 
No, it seems to, to be nothing but. Uh, the shuttle Discovery itself hasn't flown in three years, and by all accounts, uh, the orbiter itself is performing perfectly. The last concern was that uh, tear underneath Eileen Collins' window. That didn't seem to be an issue. So uh, in the end, a mission that's had so many ups and downs uh, all comes down to the one thing that NASA can't control, the weather. Okay. Thank you very much, Lee. President Bush went to New Mexico today to sign the new energy bill. It includes tax credits to encourage use of alternative energy. And to highlight that, the president uh, toured a solar power test facility. Critics say the bill is a giveaway to energy companies, and even the president acknowledged it won't get gas prices down anytime soon. The government reported today that gas prices jumped eight cents in the past week to a record high of two dollars. 37 cents a gallon, and oil soared to another record high today, just short now of $64 a barrel. Still ahead, talk about Survivor. Reality television gets a whole new meaning in Iraq, of all places. And this bride and groom of the stars will tell you the inside story. But first, CBS News honors fallen heroes Christopher Johnson. He loved all kinds of water sports. He made Eagle Scout and did volunteer work with mentally challenged kids. A West Point graduate, he achieved his dream of piloting helicopters and personally led more than 200 missions before being killed in a chopper crash. His mother says that Johnson lived and died for his country and the cause of freedom. How Hank tricked the hound by shore. Hank chose sure unscented. Stanley applied a macho smell. There they go. Rex has picked up a scent, but only Stanley's, because Hank seems undetectable. Good plan, Hank. Odor-free, sure, unscented protection that's undetected. First, Benefiber revolutionized fiber by making it clear and tasteless. Now they've made it even easier to take by putting it in caplets. New Benefiber caplets. What will they do next? Benefiber makes taking fiber easier. This allergy season, ask your doctor about something different. Singulair. While many seasonal allergy medicines block histamine, Singulair works differently by blocking leukotrienes, an underlying cause of seasonal allergy symptoms. And one prescription Singulair helps relieve a broad range of seasonal allergy symptoms for a full 24 hours. Side effects are generally mild and vary by age, and may include headache, ear infection, sore throat, and upper respiratory infection. Singulair, a different way to treat seasonal allergies. Summer's here. It's the perfect time to come into Red Lobster and create your own summer seafood feast. Combine two or three of your seafood favorites from ten of our premium dishes. Create your own summer seafood feast right now at Red Lobster. Home sweet home. Time for a fresh new look. I say start at the top with Excellence Cream from L'Oreal. Absolutely beautiful color that's hassle-free. So creamy rich it doesn't drip. Nothing protects better or guarantees my color like excellence. Beautiful, sensational, softer than silk. And nothing covers grays better than excellence. Assuming you have any. Thinking makeover, start at the top. With triple protection excellence cream from L'Oreal Paris. Because you're worth it. When you've got heartburn, don't wait a second longer than you have to for relief. Get Pepsid Complete, because nothing's faster. Not Prilosec OTC, not Zantac 150. Pepsid Complete. Guaranteed fast, or your money back. Look, Mulch, she's about to choose a seasonal allergy medicine. Pick one of those. You could be suffering in six hours. Choose any of those. You could be drowsy. Allegra 180. Lasts all day and non-drowsy. Why did I even pack those others? Not one of these allergy medicines can give you long-lasting seasonal allergy relief without the risk of drowsiness. But Allegra 180 can. Non-drowsy Allegra's worked all day. For people 12 and over, side effects alone may include headache, cold, or backache. Allegra's going to work all night, too. Long-lasting Allegra. The relief goes on. State Department said today Iran is, quote, thumbing its nose at the international community over its nuclear program. Iran resumed uranium conversion at its Isfahan nuclear facility today, despite warnings from Europe and the United States that they would seek U.N. sanctions. Iran says that its program is for electricity generation, not bombs. In Baghdad today, just about everything came to a stop for a while. The worst sandstorm in two years cut visibility in the capital to a few feet, forcing a key meeting of the Iraqi Constitution Committee to be postponed. Even so, life did go on, including the country's new reality TV show. Sharon Alfonsi has tonight's inside story. 
Most reality television shows revel in putting normal people in unusual situations. But in Iraq... They're trying to buy watermelons? A water, watermelon. For the wedding? Yes. It's exactly the opposite. Producers here are trying to make people forget they live in a war zone. And the formula is straight out of Hollywood. A simple story, two ordinary characters, and the compulsory happy ending. A good old-fashioned wedding. The show follows real couples from their engagement to their wedding day. And the best part? Producers pay for everything. From the bride's customary gold bracelets to the groom's suit. Ahmed and Maro won a wedding, but lost their privacy. Whatever we went, a camera following us. Cameras captured Ahmed making some wild choices for the couple's new home. His stoic bride looked less than amused. And viewers saw this. Trying on a ring means touching his fiancée's hand, and touching's a big no before the big day. Even so. Your wedding was your dream wedding? Yes, of course, it was our dream wedding. It was the happiest day in my life. And while it all looks idyllic, it's not. Remember, TV is all about the editing. This is a rock, and reality can't be ignored for very long. So you feel you became a target of violence because of the show? Well, we cannot say it's because of the show, but people were envying me. The couple had two cars stolen, one at gunpoint. For most Iraqis, this kind of party isn't a reality, it's a dream. Millions tune in for every episode to watch. Ahmed and Marwa are now celebrities. He loves their new fans. She doesn't. I do not answer them and, and ignore them, just like they do not exist. <laughs> you ignore them? You don't sign autographs? <laughs> Still, they're glad they did it. Glad that everyone could share in their hope for a bright future, if only for a passing moment. Sharon Alfonsi, CBS News, Baghdad. Still ahead, Eye on America. These parents say all high school athletes should be tested for a hidden heart condition that caused the sudden death of their son. The CBS Evening News and tonight's Eye on America segment are sponsored by fast-acting Mylanta Supreme. Tastes great as it works. Is heartburn keeping you away from the foods you love? Come back to the classic taste of my Lanta's original formula and eat what you like. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back. Oh. Your dreams were your ticket out. Get soothing comfort on contact and that good old classic taste. My Lanta Classic. Look for our coupon in this Sunday's newspaper. Is your shampoo missing something? Head and Shoulders is missing nothing. Its penetrating formula helps eliminate dryness, itchiness, irritation, and flakes. It's complete care for your hair and scalp. Head and Shoulders. Got an itch? Scratching tears up skin. Maximum Strength Lanocaine saves your skin from scratching with maximum anti-itch medicine and antibacterial to help kill germs. Lanocaine stops the itch, saves your skin. I'd like to redeem my credit card miles to Miami. No, blacked out. Ooh, you sound strong. Please? No. Just for me. Okay. The answer's always no. Go from no to no hassle with Capital One No Hassle Rewards. There are no blackout dates on any airline, any time. Should have worked at Capital One. What's in your wallet? Sadly, arthritis pain can mean the end of life's little pleasures. But not for people who use Aleve. People whose doctors have told them the good news about the strength and safety of Aleve. The good news that only a leave can stop arthritis pain all day with just two pills that would take eight Tylenol. Take back the pleasure arthritis pain took away. Ask your doctor about the good news. Ask your doctor about a leave. We were flying to the West Coast when David's lung collapsed. Thankfully, inside our carry-on was the greatest medicine kit he could possibly have because even though we weren't in Tennessee when the plane landed, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee was already at work on the ground. Today, we both breathe easier knowing we have Blue Cross Blue Shield, especially David. 
More hospitals, more doctors, more choices for travelers in every card. Blue Cross Blue Shield of care that travels with you. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee. There has been a big increase in the number of Americans who are suffering from allergies. In a new government study, more than half the people tested had allergic reactions. That's about double the rate 30 years ago. People in their 20s seem to have the highest risk, and the scientists found that roaches and dust mites around the house were two of the most common allergy triggers. Every year in this country, hundreds of teenage athletes die from a heart problem no one knew they had. Some parents are now demanding mandatory medical tests at school. Here is Mika Brzezinski with tonight's Eye on America. I uh, remember that. Chris and Sandy Boslett remember the phone call like it was yesterday. And he said, Miss Boslett, Ryan's not breathing. Their son Ryan had collapsed at a football workout. When they arrived, they found him lying flat on the gym floor as his coaches frantically tried to revive him. And we knew something was really wrong then. Ryan was pronounced dead at the hospital an hour later. And immediately, the Boslets were asking how their six foot four, 270 pound, 17 year old could die so suddenly. So, no signal, even looking back? No, no. An autopsy showed Ryan had a silent heart condition known as hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or HCM. By one estimate, as many as 300 people will die from HCM each year. The majority will be athletes under 18. If there's something that will detect it, then I think we should utilize those machines that will save our kids' lives. Do you think his life could have been saved? Oh, Absolutely. Right I'll be doing your EKG today, okay? The Boslets believe a simple EKG would have done it. That's why they want all schools to require EKGs before clearing any kid to play sports. EKG. Cardiologist Dr. Robert Meyerberg agrees. He cites a recent study in Italy where EKGs for young athletes are mandatory. Among their athletes, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy is almost non-existent as a cause of sudden death in athletes. In the United States, it's the most common cause. But while more than 20 million teenagers take part in athletics in this country, not even the American Heart Association advocates automatically doing EKGs. Pediatric cardiologist Robert Campbell says it's better to track family history and look out for classic warning signs like shortness of breath and fainting before requiring an expensive test. No matter how many EKGs we do, that simply alone is not going to give us that perfect guarantee that we've prevented sudden death. Does it come down to resources? I think it comes down to resources and reality. But the only reality for the Boslets is the death of their son. You kept thinking that this isn't real, it's a nightmare, you know. I'm going to wake up and this never happened. He's going to be here. Mm -hmm. Still, it did happen, and the Boslets will always believe a simple test could have made Ryan a poster boy for the sport he loved, not the silent disease that killed him. In Atlanta, I'm Mika Brzezinski for Eye on America. And coming up next, we'll show you how the latest technology is helping golfers improve their swing. I promise. I promise. I promise to put quality into every vehicle. Like our eight awards for initial quality. And eight awards for long-term dependability from J.D. Power & Associates. I promise to help protect you with safety innovations. Like OnStar, Stabilitrek, and advanced airbags. I promise to build fuel-efficient cars. 20 cars that get 30 miles per gallon. Or better, on the highway. And I promise to bring you the best cars possible at the best possible price. That's why we're continuing the GM employee discount on almost every 2005. And now for 2006, the GM Total Value Promise. We've lowered prices, added features, or redesigned over 50 models. So you get more without paying more on the cars and trucks you really want. It's not a promotion, it's a promise. Total value promise on 2006s. Employee discount on 2005s. Either way, it's a great value. I promise. There will be some discomfort, but it won't hurt a bit. Now with new Olay Regenerist Night, you can rest easy. It works during the night to increase surface cell renewal by 50% for an Olay Mini Lift every morning. So long, ordinary toothbrush. Oral-B has created the Professional Care 8000. 
It pulsates and oscillates to loosen plaque and sweep it away. Teeth get twice as clean and your whole mouth gets healthier. Why use anything else? The Oral-B Professional Care 8000. Heartburn's back. Ooh, deal me back in. You mean out. Tumsy X can't keep acid from coming back. Choose the juice that work fast and last. New Maalox Anna Superior. I'm new, I'm a chew. And I give you fast relief, plus a long-lasting protective barrier that keeps acid away for hours. Thanks, Maalox. Now we can play for hours. <laughs> you bet. New Maalox Antacid Barrier. Choose the chews that work fast and last. To hold things that can make a mess, use Glad Force Flex Trash Bags. The only bags with patented Force Flex technology that stretches to prevent rips and tears. So what goes in? Does it come out? Glad Force Flex Trash Bags and new Force Flex with Odor Shield. For stretchable strength, get Glad. Coming up in just moments on News Channel 5 at 6, what's being done locally to protect you from terrorists. We'll tell you what plans are underway if you take public transportation at 6. Practice rounds got underway today in New Jersey for golf's next big one, the PGA Championship, which begins Thursday. But the news for amateurs these days who dream of becoming the next Tiger Woods is that technology may be putting a professional swing in reach. We put the emphasis on maybe, but it's still a good story, and Mark Strassman has it. Super. Joe Allegra's finally found his golf swing. Allegra. It was hidden in plain sight inside this cutting-edge 3D technology. My understanding of the things that I do wrong and the things that I do right is now light years uh, than it was 18 months ago. His secret? The so-called MAT system, motion analysis technology. Each little dot is a reflective marker, sending light to high-speed computer cameras that track the motion of a golf swing, even a terrible golf swing. With detailed animation, Matt spotlights every last hitch. You reconstruct your body graphically so you become a virtual golfer. And to show your swing from every possible angle, watch this. It can even see right through you. I'm going to go right through the body and I'm going to watch the handle of the golf club. Watch how it, how it moves. And I can see your legs move, I can see your arms move. Or what we could do in about four or five hours on the range, we can do in one hour in here easily. I mean, really? The improvement is that fast, without a doubt. Using that same technology, Joe Allegra is down to a 10 handicap. Great putt. And now my swing's about to be compared to a real pro's. You're silver, the tour player's red. Let's see if you can match him up. Head and hands back just a little bit. Oh, they're there, okay. The moment of truth. Beautiful, awesome. And instantly you hit the ball farther and straighter and higher. With one swing. With one swing. The sort of improvement that until now was any golfer's virtual dream. Mark Strassman, CBS News, Atlanta. That's the news. I'm Bob Schieffer, CBS News in New York. Good night. For news 24 hours a day, click on cbsnews.com. Brought to you in part by Walmart. Good jobs. Good people. Great opportunities. Come grow with us at Walmart. Can these pills help you lose unwanted pounds? John says they helped him, but do they really work? Tomorrow on the CBS Evening News with Bob Schieffer, experience you can trust. This is CBS. Straight ahead on News Channel 5 at 6, Perry March is in custody charged with murder. So where are his children? We have new information on that tonight. And school's in session in Wilson County, so why were so many students standing outside? And Pac-Man still hasn't showed up for training camp. Neil O'Donnell with what the Titans defense thinks about the missing player. The news is now. From your news and information leader, winner of the Emmy for News Excellence. This is News Channel 5 at 6. Good evening, everyone. Perry March is expected to be back in Nashville by the end of the week. 
and now we know where his children are. Over the weekend, the FBI had said they were looking for the children. News Channel 5's Robert Goulston has this new information. Robert? Vicki, the March family in Mexico say both Sammy and Zippy March, Janet and Perry March's two children, are in Chicago with March's brother, Ron March, and that they've been there since late last week. Ron March, the one seen here in the red shirt, escorting Perry March's children back to Mexico in 2001, is helping his brother again. March's wife and father in Mexico say both children were flown to Chicago